Welcome to The Orange. This is a weekly news talk podcast where we bring you a little slice of life. I have with me today Daria Azizian. She's a vlogger from Vancouver. How's it going? Good, how are you? Not too bad. A little early for my tastes, but yeah. that's all right. Um, so before we get into our topics, let's learn a little bit more about you. Um, so you're a vlogger on YouTube. How'd that get started? I got started on my channel currently about a year ago, and I've just always wanted to make videos since I was a little kid, and yeah, pretty much it, yeah. Uh, we were talking before we started filming, and uh, apparently one question people ask you a lot is what your content's like, so yeah, how'd you describe that? Honestly, it's really impossible for me to describe. I don't even know what I'm doing most of the time. I just go with whatever pops up into my head, like rants or just vlogging my day, pretty much anything I feel like doing. Okay, so uh, recently you posted a video. Uh, it was a little short film called Emotional Abuse, um, and it's been getting a nice, in the last two weeks, I think, about 7,000 views. Yeah. So uh, what was that like? How'd you get that together? What was the inspiration? Um, I've been wanting to make that video for months now, and recently I have this, like, I have a, I work with this seminar, and we've been doing goal setting, and they're just, like, the goals is to... Do something that scares you the most and do something that's really risky to you. So that's the first thing that popped into my head. I'm like, oh, okay, this this film seems impossible for you to make. So let's just make that a goal and see how that works out. So I put that as a goal and I tried to, I didn't even know how I was going to do it. I had no idea. I just went on Craigslist, found actors, and I just did it in one day. And yeah, pretty much. I just, Is that where you got the children? Yeah, from Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many actors so many people looking for work so i'm like oh, why not try that out so yeah oh, man that That's worked funny. actually on the note of getting children off craigslist <laughs> i guess uh i the parents, my girlfriend the mom was there so well good uh my girlfriend had asked me the other day if uh her her church has a nursery oh. and she really wanted to babysit because she's uh a practicing nurse mm -hmm. and i was like yeah sure i like babies babies are cool <laughs> And so she sent her, her mom's very active in their church, and she, she sent her mom a text and was like, can you ask them if Shaquille can come and babysit? And the lady gets back to her and says, yeah, well, we like to, uh, we, we kind of need to get to know Shaquille first, you know, if she's gonna, he's going to be responsible with kids. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. I'll come, I can come meet her whenever you like. It's like, yeah, typically, uh, I think we, we're going to need him to attend our church for the next six months, and then he can babysit for an hour. <laughs> Oh my god, that's wild. So, I guess I'll have to try Craigslist hmm. if I really want to babysit. Yeah. Apparently, church, that's that right. particular church isn't too keen. Wow. Um, so, actually, that's a good, convenient segue. Uh, so, the first topic we're going to cover briefly. Uh, recently, Pope Francis um, spoke out against uh, domestic abuse against women, um, as well as female uh, mutilation, mm -hmm. and also that he wants uh, nuns to have a more senior role in a very male-dominated Vatican. Uh, Pope Francis is an interesting guy. He's very, very new school in terms of the, the things he says, uh, speaking out for LGBTQ rights. What are your thoughts on, like, a more progressive church? Um, I completely agree with what he's saying. I just read the article that you sent me, and I honestly don't know who he is or anything about him, but reading from that, I I, feel, I think that's amazing. It's just like a start to get everyone, like the equality together and everything, just making females just as much as valuable as males. So especially in the church, that's huge. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, good. And yeah, it's interesting. Uh, it's kind of a weird dynamic because you don't really see that a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, with the Catholic Church. Yeah. Uh, so let's get on to the juicy part. Uh, Lacey Green, for those of you unfamiliar, is, yeah, you're already excited. <laughs> oh, tell. yeah. <laughs> uh, so for those of you unfamiliar with Lacey Green, she's a, uh, what's the term I have written down here? She's a sex education activist uh, on YouTube. She has over a million subscribers, and she hosts a show called Sex Plus. And she was in Vancouver recently at UBC, giving a little lecture seminar and you attended so what was that like oh it was amazing like just to see everything the content that she puts on youtube in person like it was just perfect like it does, wasn't does, different does her trans like personality transition from youtube to being oh yeah person? oh yeah it's it's like she's not fake at all like she's the sweetest person ever that i know well like she was truly amazing um so how long have you been watching her videos 
I think I started in the summer, and I think it was when someone shared one of her viral videos, the Why I'm a Feminist. I think it was that one, and then I just started watching all her videos, and I just fell in love. So, uh, so has she kind of been a little bit of an inspiration in terms of some of the content you put out? Definitely, yeah, definitely. She's a huge role model to me. Would you call yourself a feminist? Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> all right, so that's, that's an interesting question, because um, I'd consider myself a feminist. That's and if and so here's the here's the thing I have I, I have a few friends who are very anti-feminist mm -hmm. and the reason behind that isn't they're against equality for women but like there is with all beliefs and all movements uh, there are some radical yeah. feminists out there yeah so I guess my question would be um what do you think about like the radical feminists who seem to want more than equality and it's kind of a push for superiority because um well, I think I don't think they're feminists because feminism is about equality for both genders. It's not just about females. I think people get confused because it says feminine, which I don't really know why it's just feminine. But honestly, it's it's just about equality and the ones who are just pushing for females like stronger only like that. That's not feminism. So, yeah. Um. What are your thoughts on, because I, I, I know you posted a video recently, and I think it was one of your most popular videos uh, about Nicki Minaj's Anaconda and all about that base. Uh, and there's a lot of issues there about skinny shaming and, and fat shaming. Um, so like, where did that inspiration come from to talk about these issues and post these videos on YouTube? Uh, that video, it was when I heard all about that bass and you know I liked the song and everything and then I started hearing the lyrics and I'm like what the hell is this so then yeah it just like inspired me I'm like okay I'm gonna make a video about this I didn't think it would like get the most views out of all my channel really like I wasn't even trying honestly I just I just did it and then that's yeah. nice though isn't it like you wake up one morning and yeah you see your views are in the thousands yeah uh, that's so cool. I recall she actually Megan Trainer talked about that and she kind of defended it, saying that if you listen to the lyrics more closely and you read into it, um, she says she's just kidding and that uh, she thinks that skinny girls should be happy with their own body, too, because she knows they're also insecure. Yeah. yeah do, you think, do you think she was being genuine there, or do you think she's kind of, like, falling back? I on? honestly think she's a very caring, sweet person. Like, clearly, she's, she didn't mean any harm. Like, I understand that. Even when I was making the video and hearing the song, like, I understand... Her intention wasn't to bash skinny girls, but people get confused and they don't understand that even as a joke, it hurts. And even, even like, I know it was just a joke and I know she wasn't trying to do any harm, but it just, it's not funny anymore when you keep doing it again and again. And it's just going to be a pattern and spread to all, like all her fans and her viewers. It's just not something you want to spread. Um, you also did a video about uh, women going topless and I know a classmate of mine at BCIT the other day, uh, we were interviewing streeters, and a woman downtown was being um, hassled by police for being topless. Um, who was it? I don't... When Kim Kardashian brought out her photo, I don't know if you saw it, like, uh, the big photo of her ass. <laughs> the... um, and then it came out later that it was photoshopped, and I think it was either... I think it was Kirst Kirsten Stewart... Uh, posted a photograph of her topless, and her one condition was, you can't Photoshop anything. Um, oh. and it has to be a natural. Do you think that's kind of the right image to send? The right message to send? She posted a photo of her topless and captioned and, it. Saying, and she said, the, the entire thing was, she told the photographs to the magazine, you can't Photoshop any of this. Like, it has to be my body. I don't care if my tits are too small. I don't care if... My shoulders are too broad. It has to be me naturally. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I'm, what I'm asking, what are your thoughts on Photoshopping? Oh, on Photoshop, I think, I, I don't think Photoshop should really be a thing because it does give people the standards that this is how you're supposed to look like, which isn't really real. But even without Photoshop, people are gorgeous, which is it was just amazing so it's it's so weird to me how people still use photoshop and have to like you know airbrush everything when that's not real like in real life kim kardashian like you know people have pimples people have whatever you know but i think it's it should be a personal choice you should choose if you want to photoshop or not it's just like makeup i think yeah. where if you want to choose to cover up some of your face like go ahead you know it should be something that you decide to do 
So what do you think's worse? Uh, Photoshopping in general because it sends the wrong message or people who lie about their photoshopped images saying, no, it's me, it's me, and then it comes out. Um, what sends the worst message? The worst message. I think a worse message should be... Sorry, should I do that again? That's okay. Um, I think a worse message would be when you lie about it, I think. Because, hmm, I'm trying to think about this, how to word it. Um... So it was either lying about it or what was that the question? Just the like, fact that people do it. The fact that people do it. Um, yeah, I think I think lying about it because why, why should you lie about something that you do? You know, it's yeah, lying about it should shouldn't be a message that you want to send out. So just being honest about it. There's nothing wrong with it. You shouldn't be ashamed of it. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, I think the one issue is just the fact that. Uh, just against photoshopping in general is only the fact that since you're not saying that it's photoshopped, uh, it, especially with young girls, really gives the wrong impression <laughs> as to oh, yeah, 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 standards definitely. they have to attain. Yeah. Um, so I think we're probably nearing, the f I haven't kept track, unfortunately, but I'm guessing we're around 15, 20 minutes. Oh, uh, so enough. we'll wrap it up. I do have a question, though. Um, so when did you start noticing, because I was looking through your YouTube, I'm like, wow, she has 12, 1,500 subscribers, and then I stumbled onto your Twitter, it was over 20,000 followers. <laughs> so like, how did that happen? Because I know I have a lot of, I have friends who are trying to get more active on social media. I'm trying to do it myself. And when did you start noticing that people were following you? People were following you. And I just. So I'll be completely honest about the Twitter followers and shit. Um, I think, no, sorry, I think. Um, I made Twitter like years ago and I was like a huge, like, like I love Twitter. Like I love Instagram and all of that. And I would, I, my Twitter currently, like my official one, my main one, it used to be like a fan account, like a secret account that I would like hide from everybody. Like before I had my YouTube, before anything. And I would just like, you know, I'll, you know how those like fan girls, they follow everyone and everyone's yeah. back. They retweet. And us and retweet. Yeah. All that stuff. That's yeah. what I used to do. And then I ended up making it my main account. So. Whenever people ask me, it's like, how do you have so many followers? It's like, I kind of used to be a little fangirl, so that's basically how I have so many followers. I mean, I guess it's not to your detriment, so. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, uh, thanks a lot for coming on. Uh, you filled my time slot for the week. I had a good time talking to you. Um, Lacey Green. Ah, you got, her, you got a video of her saying hi to your blog, huh? I did, yeah. Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> Um, what did she talk about by Jen? Out of curiosity. Uh, I was about rape culture and she talked a lot about the gender stereotypes, gender, gender roles. And she, it's basically a lot of stuff that she has on her channel. I think she said a lot, most like basically most of it was all on her channel. Was it, like, was it a long seminar? It was, it wasn't too long. I think it was about an hour long, about an hour. Well, thanks a lot for coming on. Um, if you want to watch Daria's videos, you can follow, you can subscribe to her at youtube.com slash D-X-R-R-I-A. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And yeah, Twitter at Daria Zizian. Thanks again for coming on. Hey guys, thanks for checking out this week's episode of The Orange. If you have any tips on how I can improve the format, please leave a comment below. You can follow me on Facebook at Shaquille Majuri Journalism, Instagram at Shaquille Majuri, and Twitter at Shaquille Majuri. Please subscribe to the channel for more weekly videos. Have a great day.